All right, folks, I'm going to do a quick explanation uh, using Q as to why when you add water to a weak acid or a base, why does the percent ionization go up? Uh, a lot of people would tend to think that you add water, it's going to affect all of the concentrations the same, and it's not going to affect the dissociation or ionization. But it doesn't. When you dilute a weak acid, the percent ionization actually does go up. And so I want to show you this. I'm going to show you this through an ECQ table, which is similar to an ice table. It's just we're going to look at the initial equilibrium system, the change, and then what it would be at Q, and then that's going to determine what has to happen here. So imagine, if you will, we have some weak acid, HA, and it dissociates into your hydrogen ion and your conjugate base. Let's say at equilibrium, so we're at equilibrium, we have 0.1 molar HA, 0.001 molar hydrogen ion, and 0.001 molar conjugate base. In a case like that, your Ka is going to be 0.001 squared over 0.1, and that comes out to equal uh, 1 times 10 to the minus 5. So there's your Ka value. Now imagine, if you will, you add water and you dilute it. Let's say we dilute it by adding twice as much water as was originally there. Let's say we had started with a 20 milliliter solution and we added 20 milliliters of water. What we're doing is we're taking the number of moles. We aren't changing the moles of any of the chemicals, but we are changing the volume. So remember, molarity is moles per unit volume. So our change really is we're taking each one of these and we're dividing them by 2 because we're adding twice the amount of water and molarity is moles per liter, or now twice the amount of volume. And so what you'd end up with is a 0.05 value for HA, a 0.0005, and a 0.0005 there. So if we solve for Q at that point, by adding that water, we now have 0.0005 squared over 0.05. Our Q in this case comes out to equal 5 times 10 to the minus 6. Now as you know, when Q is smaller than K, it's going to favor the forward reaction, which means once we've added that water, we're no longer at equilibrium, we're at Q, and Q tells us that to reestablish equilibrium, we must favor that forward reaction. What does the forward reaction do? It produces more hydrogen ion and more conjugate base, which is increasing the percent ionization that's going on in that system. It takes what was at equilibrium, and now we have to ionize more than what we did before. So there's the mathematics that go into that. There's also an explanation, and I'm just going to say it, I'm not going to draw anything. But if you don't want to get into the Q explanation and you want a more mechanistic explanation, what you would say is that when you've got kinetics, when you have the weak acid interacting with water to dissociate and form hydrogen and ion and conjugate base, adding extra water doesn't change the rate of that happening because you have a lot of both water and the uh, weak acid to begin with. So those collisions are going to be happening as normal. But by adding more water, those water molecules can actually interfere with the hydrogen ion interacting or bumping into the conjugate base to reform the original weak acid. So it does interfere with the reverse reaction, but it does not interfere with the forward reaction. And so as a result, we end up with more hydrogen ion than we did prior to that. So there is a mechanistic explanation for this. The College Board is going to be looking for a Q explanation. And so there it was. I hope it made sense. And uh, good luck if you get a question like this.